everyone, I'm Mind, and in this video, I just want to take a moment to appreciate LEGO Classic. Because I don't know about you guys, but LEGO Classic is something I have not bought since I was a kid. Because when I was little, I would get brick boxes all the time, because they were just an easy thing, like a fun collection of bricks to play with. But as I got older, I started leaning more into themes and whatnot, so the more classic style set sort just went off my radar. To me, they just always seemed like boxes of basic bricks, and it just wasn't something I was interested in. Like, I saw a lot of people online getting excited about the 90th anniversary classic set, which I agree looks really cool, but I feel like the standard classic sets, like the ones you see here, are usually overlooked. But in the past year or so, when I've gone to stores, I've been really interested because these classic sets seem to be doing a bit more than just being brick boxes. They have like their own themes now and their own unique bricks that are included, and that's a really fascinating concept. So I decided to ask the LEGO Master Network to send me over a few classic sets. So of course, thank you to the LEGO Master Network for providing me the sets for this video. And now, let me show you the two I got. So here's the first one, the two that I got, the LEGO Classic Creative Monsters. This one's the one I was less interested in between the two of them, but there seems to be some really cool parts here. I like this leaf piece. Piece, these bright yellow flippers, these bull horns at the back, and all five of these little guys that they have like pre-built in the box look adorable. So I'm excited to get this open and like see what I can create with these parts. And then the other one, the creative transparent bricks, is the entire reason I'm making this video. This set apparently came out last year, but it just completely flew under my radar. But when I discovered it recently, I was like, wow, I need this set. Transparent bricks are some of the LEGO's coolest parts, I just think they're so much fun, and getting an entire set that's based around them is incredible. So I can't wait to see all the cool transparent parts in here. So without further ado, I think, let's get started. So we'll start with the smaller one, the Creative Monsters, this has 140 pieces and I believe it retails for $9.99 in the US, which is a pretty good price considering how many pieces are here. Let's pop this thing open. Okay, so it does come with a little instruction booklet, but it looks like it's just instructions on how to build the uh, five monsters that we saw in the front of the box. Which, I don't know if I want to do that. I feel like I want to just design my own. So I'm not actually going to follow these instructions. And yeah, I don't think there's any others in here. And there's a total of four bags in this set, so let's get them open. Alright, so pouring everything out, taking a look at it, it doesn't actually look like there's that many parts with them all laid out like this. It looks like it's mostly just the parts that build the monsters that they showed on the box. There's a few extras, like I don't believe these were used in any of them. But yeah, there's not that many, like, surprise parts in here, all the interesting ones were shown on the box. But that's okay, I mean, it's a $10 set, what do you expect? Um, some interesting ones though, of course, that leaf piece, like I mentioned, that's pretty cool. The fire piece, not an uncommon part at all, but it's like one that's cool to get if you're a kid who doesn't have that much Lego. There's a Nexonite shield piece in green. Of course, lots of these eyeball pieces, both the open eyes and the squinting eyes. They have Lego Mario arms in two different colors, which is fascinating. There's like light nougat, and I think that's regular nougat. And then of course there's those bright yellow flippers that I mentioned. I'm not sure if these have come in any sets outside of this one. Obviously flippers and other colors have, but bright yellow I think is new. So that's very cool to get. But anyway, yeah, I've got all these parts. Let's see if I can put together anything interesting. Alright, so I put together three monsters using the pieces from this set. I probably could scrape together one or two more if I really wanted to, but I feel like I'd really have a lack of parts, so I don't want to force it. My third one even is not the best. But anyway, let me show you what I created. So this was my first one, this little, like, leaf guy with fire powers. I guess my idea behind him was to combine, like, the fiery aesthetic with the leaf pieces, and I'm really happy with how he came out. I especially love this face I built, the leaves as the mustache, I think that's adorable. And then he's got, like, one leaf arm on one side, and then, like, this fire cannon on the other other. And then like this leaf piece has the hair, that's actually what I started with. I think this guy looks really cute. I'm really happy I put him together, he's a lot of fun. But then here's my second one, my goal with this one was to just use these teeth pieces for something. But he actually almost looks kind of dog-like with the ears on the side and everything, and I think he came together pretty good too. I gave him the little bull horns out the back, and then he just has a slope that comes down. Not as complex as the last one, but I think he's pretty solid. Very happy with him, and again, very cute. And then here's my final one, which I'm not super proud of, but I think he's alright. I gave him four arms because I thought that'd be funny, and then he has these wacky sorts of legs. My idea was to make him sort of bug-like, so he's got two feet at the front, two feet at the back, and then four tall arms. And then he's got these horns coming out the top of his head, as well as one coming out the back. And then it's got this little mouth right here, which can be moved back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I think he's goofy, but like, especially from the back, you can see I was running out of parts. But anyway, yeah, I genuinely had a ton of fun putting these three together. It was everything I'd hoped for with LEGO Classic. And I feel like there's a ton of fun that can be had here in only a $10 set. Because normally when I get a set this size from any other theme, like yeah, I might like the minifigure or whatever, but normally it just goes onto the shelf and then I never touch it again. But this is unique, this is a memory, and there's so many fun and interesting pieces here. Something else I'm really proud of is how unique my builds look compared to the five that are recommended on the box. Like, despite being made from the same 140 pieces, all of mine are distinct. 
And while obviously pieces are shared, none of them look the same as the ones on the box. So, so far, LEGO Classic's been a joy, and this makes me want to pick up more of them. But of course, that's only the first of two sets, so now let's open up the Creative Transparent Bricks. Alright, so here it is, 500 pieces. We can see there are a few recommended builds on the front. Well, let's pop this thing open. Also, it looks like the, uh, the box got a bit damaged, but uh-oh. Hopefully everything inside's okay. So once again, it does come with instructions if you want to build, like, any of the characters that you saw on the front. But I'm not really interested in any of them. I kind of like this car guy, and I kind of like this fish. But I think I'll have more fun just using the pieces to do whatever. So we're going to ignore the instructions. All right, let's get these bags open. It's not only transparent bricks in the set, so I think I'm going to separate the transparent bricks from the solid bricks. So here's all the parts that were included in this set, and there's a lot of really cool transparent parts here. However, there is way more normal color parts here. In fact, I'm a little disappointed by how many solid color parts there are compared to the number of transparent parts. Like, don't get me wrong, I really love all the transparent parts that were included. However, I just wish there was more of them. Because I get they're going to include some solid color parts, you just kind of need them for any type of build. But yeah, calling the box creative transparent bricks and this is all you get? Mm, a little disappointing. Anyway, let me take a look at some of the coolest bricks you get. For one, you get a few of these sparkly purple bricks. These are especially cool. I've never seen them before, but I really, really love how that looks. They're probably from, like, friends or something. You also get discs in that color and cones in that color. There's a few bricks in, like, the crystallized pink color. Really love, like, the trans bright green. That's a super cool color. That's been used in Monkey Kid a few times, but I don't really see it outside of that too much. So even though this only comes with a few parts of that color, it's still very cool. There's these big translate blue pieces. There's also quite a few of these, too, which would work pretty well for flowing water in LEGO Minecraft. Uh, coming to the reds, we have this big red disc, which is awesome. I really like this one. Just look at that. That's super cool. Well, this isn't an uncommon part. You get tons of these trans orange slope pieces. Like, you get more of this part than any other single part in this set, so you can definitely do something with them. There's some of these, like, Transclear mailbox door pieces, and then the mailboxes themselves do come in solid colors in this set. There is actually quite a bit of Transclear, which I like. This part especially in Transclear is really awesome. And then in terms of interesting non-transparent parts, you get a crab. Um, that's kind of cool. There's a classic Lego frog. Uh, you get a few of these classic Lego flower pieces, which I honestly, I did not know were still in production but those give me like memories of my childhood. There's a few of these leaf pieces which are always nice to get. There's a teapot piece, funnily enough. But yeah, other than that, it's mostly just basic bricks. So let me see if I can put something together with these. Unlike the monsters, I'm not going to be trying to use most of the parts. I think I'm just going to make one build. But I want to make something cool with these transparent parts. Because there's a lot of fun possibilities here. Okay, so I might have went a little overboard. I said I was only going to build one thing, but I ended up building four things. But yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at what I put together. So this was the very first thing I made. I'm not in love with it. It's just a little tree on fire. Wasn't sure where to start with these pieces, and I saw all the fiery pieces, so this was my first idea. My idea was it could be displayed with the monster from the other set, because the tree fits his all aesthetic, but he's also got fire, so it can make it look like he's burning it down. Which is kind of fun, but I felt like I really didn't make use of the transparent parts here. Then for my second build, I want to make a little terrain piece for the second monster story built. So I made like this little icy terrain. We have this final little penguin guy here which uses a few of the transparent parts. But even still I was like I feel like I don't have enough parts to make this look good. This is so bare bones. This mountain that he's standing on isn't even anything. So I wasn't very happy with this either. But then my third build I felt came together a lot nicer. The idea behind this one is it's supposed to be some sort of little magic shop. So I put together like all these different transparent pieces on the wall to be like different potions and whatnot. And then there's magic being performed right here with this water coming out of this red disc. I made this funny little magician guy who's completely transparent. My original idea was like, oh, this is a crab that made a body for himself. But the crab kind of just works as the torso of the magician. And I really like it. I think he's super cute. With him removed though, you can better look at the rest of the magic shop. There's some stained glass windows at the top, a little like mailbox compartment right here, and then at the top shelf there's lots of different transparent pieces as well as this little creature who's sitting up there. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with how this turned out. Again, because this is a $30 set and there's limited pieces, there's a few things I would change. Like, I'm not a huge fan of how it goes from red to pink to dark red on the wall back here. But I think this looks better than the rest of my creations. And then finally I put together this guy. Not sure what he is, but he's some sort of flying horse fire thing. He uses a lot of trans orange and trans yellow. It's got like a unicorn horn at the top and a giant snout. And I think he was fun to put together and he has a lot of personality. I really wanted to do some sort of creature because I felt like my terrain pieces weren't working out because there isn't a ton of parts here to build terrain. But yeah, again, I mean, there's a few colors that I would change if the set came with other colors. I'm pretty happy with this guy. He's goofy. He was fun. I enjoyed putting him together. 
So there's my four builds in the Creative Transparent Bricks box. And I think overall I had less fun with this one than the Creative Monsters one. Like, don't get me wrong, there was a ton of super cool pieces in this one, but I felt like none of them really fit together that well. And the recommendations on the box were cool, but I felt like there was not as many options to create your own things outside of that. That just might be my own lack of creativity and skill though. I don't build custom things too often, but it was very easy for me to put together the three monsters I made with the first set. And with the second set, I definitely struggled a lot more. Still though, to conclude this video, I had a lot of fun with LEGO Classic, and if you're like me and this has been a theme you've overlooked for years, I highly recommend you pick one of them up, because even like Creative Monsters, that's only $10, so you could very easily pick just that one up for fun. And I would recommend that you do, because as I said, it's a very different LEGO experience, and it reminds me a lot of playing with LEGO as a kid, and it was cool just to build goofy things like this. Let's add this guy back in here now too. But anyway, yeah, I think that's gonna conclude this video. I just had the idea that I wanted to mess around with LEGO Classic, and give it the love it deserves. I'll definitely be picking up some more classic sets in the future. For sure I want to get the 90th anniversary one, but there might be some others. If you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. But yeah, let me know what you think of my builds, and let me know, like, are you someone who has collected classic, or are you like me where you just sort of ignored it? But as for this video, I think that's about going to do it. So thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do LEGO videos just like this one almost every day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!